Adam Goth with the Fiber School, and I'm going to be your host this afternoon. We're going to try and stay uh, up-tempo and stay excited and kind of make this webinar something that can be enjoyable and informative and, uh, you know, really get something out of it. So thank you for joining us today. One thing that may keep you excited is I'm going to try and keep this webinar to 45 minutes. So, you know, try and keep you interested, try and keep you fresh, because I know when it gets closer to an hour, you start to lose a little bit of that focus and uh, brain space. So I'm going to try and keep uh, the slides moving here. We have a lot of great information to go over. I like to repeat myself. Uh, let me say that I like to repeat myself, and I'll say it again, because that's what we're going to be doing today. Connector inspection and, inc and cleaning you are constantly repeating yourself. You're repeating a process that if you do it properly, guess what? You're going to get some great tests, you're going to have some clean connectors, and you're going to build the proper footprint for what you need to do in the future. So what we are going to do for everyone that knows me, I want to say welcome back. I appreciate the following, and as always, please please save your questions till the end of the webinar. I know sometimes you forget things. You can go ahead and type them in, but we save the questions till the end of the day uh, at the end of the webinar. Like I said, that'll be in about 45 minutes, and we'll go over everything that you have there. Um, for those of you that are new, uh, that's wonderful because this is a newer uh, webinar for more novice than beginners. Uh, it doesn't hurt if you're longer in the tooth. Sometimes you can pick some some things up in uh, in my webinars also. Uh, I have been with the Fiber School for going on three years now, and I have worked in all aspects with fiber as far as a technician in the field, a uh, desk jockey on the sales team, actually getting in production and seeing how some of the uh, machines, tools, and cleaning products work and getting out there and then promoting it. And uh, data and file management with Fiberbase, that's something that's helping with the mapping of uh, uh, cloud and fiber and data management. And I've even worked a little bit on the project management side as far as with helping with uh, some of the jobs and, and the, the gentlemen that work at our fine institution here. Um, some of the larger jobs that I have underneath my belt is I've worked on the Susquehanna Center down in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, it is now the M&T Bank, but I always like to say Susquehanna uh, first and foremost. I also most recently worked on the Holland Tunnel for uh, up in New York. Um, those are some of the bigger jobs that I've had underneath my belt. And uh, so now the people that are newer, you are now informed and have an idea of where we're at. And going forward, we are going to start up our webinar here. So first we want to start off with the visual inspection of connectors. We're going to go over understanding connectors, what equipment is employed, Parameters can be measured. How does the equipment operate? And then also some tests and tips. So once again, if you don't mind, please save the uh, questions for the, uh, the end of uh, our webinar that we have going on here. Um, we're going to say the word cleanliness time and time again, something that is extremely, extremely important um, as far as with connectors and testing and everything. It's, it's one of the most important things that is necessity uh, for working in our field and for the, uh, the connection and for the file data management, uh, for the fiber, the light passing through, whatever it happens to be. Um, something that is extremely, extremely important. So now we're actually going to focus on the connection here. Uh, this has some uh, movement in this slide, so uh, grab onto your seats here. This one, this is a little exciting. What you're looking at here is an LC connector. You got your bulkhead adapter, and then you actually have your fiber connector right here. You have your alignment sleeve on both ends and you have your ferrule. 
So like I said, this is an LC connector. You have your bulkhead. And fiber connectors are widely known as the weakest and most prob problematic points in the fiber network. Okay, the precision that's needed always amazes me. But for these fiber connectors and the ferrules to match up and line up perfectly, their core alignment is something that's extremely important. Um, all places, if there's going to be an issue with connection, it's right here where these two mate. So right where it's circled, you have both the fiber on both sides that actually make a physical contact here. And that's where the connection begins. So with just going over that, what makes a good fiber connection? Now, that's a really simple question. I always like to say the three basic principles, the three P's, those three strong P's, they're critical in achieving fiber optic connection. So you need a perfect core alignment. Like I was just saying before in the previous slide, core alignment where these two both line up. Now, back when it first started, when fiber was becoming new to the industry, there was issues with core alignment. Now, not so much. It's uh, with what's going out with the manufacturing and everything, the core alignment issues, matching up the fiber, we're, we're kind of past that. So core alignment. That's where the two pieces of fiber actually meet up. And where the light is transmitted, the data is transmitted, whatever is passing through here can easily, if it is clean, pass through and be received well. Even if there is some dirt here, which isn't something you want by any means, ways, shapes, forms, but if there is, you can still get light, light passing through, but it won't pass through as well it may even refract back. So of those three Ps, perfect core alignment, something very important, you need to have the physical contact to allow this light to go and pass through cleanly. And to be able to do that, you need a pristine connector interface. So before this bad boy comes across and lands on your fiber here, you need to know that this side, which I'm using with the arrow here, is completely clean. Now the black right here is the actual fiber itself. The cladding where it says cladding here in white surrounding it is much larger than the actual fiber. It all needs to truly be clean because if on the cladding there's some dirt, dust, residue, that can carry over onto the fiber. So before you go ahead and smash this bad boy together, you need to know that both sides here are completely clean. And we're going to go over in grave detail how to do that, what to do, how to make sure that you do it correctly. And that's the thing that I'm going to try and you know, get across to you today, that we implement how to go ahead and do that. You know, to, to set up a format, a plan, that each time, as long as you do it over and over and over again, you're going to get the same positive results. If you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, and you're not getting the result that you choose or that you truly need, that's, that's the description in the Dictionary of Insanity. So I'm going to try and save you a lot of time, try and save you a lot of headaches, and all of the mistakes when I first started out in the field, um, that was many years ago, but like I said, I've been with fiberoptic.com for three years now. Um, avoid all of those things. G give you little time-saving uh, benefits. So the end face uh, from this slide, you want to make sure it's perfectly clean. If it's not, you're going to get high reflection, and we'll go over in detail what that is. Because it's dirty, 90% uh, of issues are because of dirt or some contaminant. So 90% of the time, if you can clean that connector, that end face, then you're going to go ahead and resolve your issues. Once again, thank everyone for uh, some of the late comers I see straggling in here. Appreciate you stopping out. 
And uh, this is our webinar Wednesday. Happy to have you here. And uh, what we are now looking at is what makes a bad fiber connection. Today's connector design and production techniques have eliminated most of the challenges to achieve core alignment and physical contact. I know I kind of went over that in the, the previous slide, but it's true. Uh, with what we have with our robots technology and manufacturing nowadays, core alignment, which used to be an issue in the past, has kind of turned into a dinosaur and isn't so much of a, an issue. The one thing that is interesting is if you do get a bad connector, even if it's factory made, you notice it pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, you pretty much just have to eat that and then get a new connector and, and splice that bad boy on there, though. So what remains challenging is me maintaining that pristine end face. Um, as a result, contamination is the number one source of troubleshooting in optical networks. So here's another exciting slide. A particle mated into a core fiber can cause significant back reflection, end insertion loss, and even damage equipment. So before we went and slammed this bad boy together, the cladding here and the fiber itself, somehow there was some dirt, some residue. We didn't do our job correctly, or someone before us didn't do their job correctly, what we're going to say, and I'll explain why that should not ever be the case. But they didn't do their job correctly, we didn't do our job correctly. Oh, it's dirty. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smash this down anyway. I didn't check it, I didn't scope it, didn't clean it. So now, if you remember on the previous slide, when the light was easily transmitting through going full blast, now we have some dirt here. And if you notice this back reflection is what this is called, it's taking some of the power of this light, the force of this light, and it's sending it back towards your machine or towards your fiber where you're shooting this laser to go ahead for this test. So as you can still see, some of the light is still passing through some of this dirt. If you notice that the lines are not as strong, so the light data information coming through may not be as quick, may not be as um, complete, or if even complete at all, and you know this could be a, a network issue right here. So what equipment do we use to go ahead and look at these issues, fix these issues, troubleshoot these issues? Um, the equipment which is great for troubleshooting and protection uh, are some of the units that we're showing here. Um, this is a precision rated optics microscope here, handheld, has a zoom in, zoom out. An AFL right here gives you more than one screen as far as uh, a before and after. This particular microscope, as you can see, um, scope right here, is showing uh, before cleaning and after cleaning. Looks as though there's some oil residue here. Could be some uh, um, skin oil or, or finger oil. But this can then be uploaded to a laptop and then uh, sent over to a project manager or a foreman, or you know, just uh, or or the owner of uh, of the site that is asking, why is my data not coming through the way I like? Why is you know, why are we not receiving our information, data, whatever it happens to be? Um, so here are three of the uh, leaders out there uh, here at uh, fiberoptic.com and uh, uh, the fiber school. We obviously do training, we do sales and we also do services. So if you do have any questions as far as how can I get my hands on some of this equipment, uh, myself or somebody with our staff is happy to help you out. But today we're just going over the ins and the outs of, uh, of connectors and, and how to keep them clean. So feel free to go ahead and fire away with questions you know, at the end. Um, so one thing with uh, cleaning procedures, you know, an inspection video probe or, or a fiber scope is you clean first, then you scope, then you take a picture. Do your work, clean, scope, and then take a picture. That's one of the best processes to go by and best rule of thumbs. 
So you want to clean first, always, always clean first. Even if you know someone just cleaned before you, you want to make sure that you go ahead and clean again. Just making sure that there's no contamination, that some dust did not somehow attach itself to uh, your end face. So it's something that you want to make sure that you're constantly doing. So most video probes or fiber scopes are using 200 times or 400 times power. Recommendations for single mode, you're looking at 400 times. For a video probe or OTDRs with the USB, you know, you want to make sure you record, uh, you know, your pictures for maintenance and restoration. This is a cover your butt aspect also. And think of it this way. If you go to a job and you're the first to get there, but you can clearly tell that people have worked on these connectors. Let's just use this little picture right here as a for instance. So this video fiber scope is checking this fiber, this, this uh, strand of fiber here in a row. What happened to the last individual that was there before you? Did they, when they were putting this away, did they clean it? Now they're supposed to and reconnect this before they left, but did they? By you scoping this first, excuse me, by you cleaning this first, then scoping it and taking a picture when you first arrive, so right now it would be 319, we cleaned it, we scoped it, and we took our picture. What that is saying in that 319, this is what we're seeing on that particular fiber. This is what I just tested. Now you go and do whatever work you need to do, run whatever diagnostic tests or you know do whatever, and now you're leaving, you're closing up this uh, this hub or this tower or whatever it happens to be, you go ahead and clean again, scope again, and take a picture. What this does, now say you've been there for 20 minutes, a half an hour or an hour. Say the time is now 4.20 and you're leaving. Uh, at 4.20, you would have protection showing a timestamp on that picture of that connector that you just did. So if somebody else comes behind you, and this is where the protection comes in, to do more work because you're not going to be the only person ever to lay hands on that fiber ever again, and they say, oh my goodness, this fiber is broken, or what happened to, th to this connector? I don't understand. It's scratched, or there's oil all over it. It's not testing well. You have photographic evidence and protection simply to say, well, this was at 420 on 426 2017 here's my protection i have this this is when i left and left the site this is how the connector you know looked so the next person that was to come in would find the fiber in good shape and in uh and and could not um put any way shape or form you know that that um bad fiber scratch fiber or anything on on your shoulders so it's just some food for thought I uh, like to just kind of put that out there. It, it's not uh, just to cover your butt, but it is protection to say, hey, this is the shape that I left it in. This was the shape that it was in when I got there. Um, this, may, this connector might need to be re-spliced. It may need a new connector. Hey, there was nothing wrong with the connector. It was just a little dirty. Whoever was there last was either lazy or um, just they contaminated it accidentally. It doesn't even necessarily mean laziness. It can simply mean that sometimes uh, dust got on that connector after you cleaned it and that got in the bulkhead and then there you go. It can really honestly be that simple. So connector contaminants. Any contamination in fiber connection can cause failure of the component or failure of the whole system. And that's where, you know, you run into some very, very big trouble. Even microscopic dust particles can cause a variety of problems for optical connections. A particle that particularly or completely blocks the core generates strong back reflections which can cause instability in the laser system. Um, also, and I'm going to put my arrow right here, if you have really, really bad back reflection and you have an extremely strong 
laser doing your tests, you can actually destroy or damage your operating OTDR or operating system. Um, dust particles trapped between two fiber faces can scratch the glass surfaces. I've seen from people slamming just just being rough with your fiber. Fiber is tough, it's resilient, it will last for years upon years in all types of heat and cold, although I have seen it uh, become brittle after years and years and years. If it's treated properly, managed the way it should be, um, it will last a long time. In most cases, it, it will have a, a never-ending uh, series and, and will always last for you. But when you damage the end faces, you damage, scratch those connectors, you're going to have to either uh, have those connectors cut off and re-spliced or, you know, you're just going to have to have better technicians that takes care of the equipment better. You know, even if a particle is only situated on the cladding or on the edge of the end face, not actually on the fiber, it can cause an air gap or a misalignment, which was the core alignment, which we were going over earlier, between the fiber cores, which significantly degrades the optical signal. So even if the end face of the fiber is not scratched, if there's just enough residue contaminant there, uh, you know, it'll, it'll affect the optical signal. Um, one micrometer dust particle on a single mode core can block up to 1% of the light, which is a 0 0.05 dB loss, which really sounds like not that much, but in the fiber world, it is a very big deal. A 9 micrometer speck is too small to see without a microscope, but it can completely block the fiber core. These contaminants can be more difficult to remove than dust particles, and sometimes, in most cases, you even have to go ahead and, and get a, uh, do another fusion splice, cut off that connector and, and uh, get a new one and put it on there. Most connectors uh, and most OTDRs have technology to protect them from back reflection. Let me repeat that. Most OTDRs have technology to protect them from back reflection. So if you go and shoot a laser down, down a fiber and there's bad back reflection because of a dust particle or something blocking it, um, the OTDR will go ahead and shut itself down or, or turn itself off so to avoid going and uh, damaging the actual unit. In years prior, that was not the case, and we saw a lot more units being damaged because of that. So connector contaminants. In addition to dust, other types of contamination must also be cleaned off the end face. Such materials include oils frequently from human hands. Honestly, it's some of the worst. It should never, ever be on your fiber because that means you're actually taking your hand and putting it on the fiber. In no way, shape, or form in any of my education, any of my training, have I ever received a book that said, go ahead and touch the end face of the fiber. It doesn't even make sense. And all you're going to do is end up making your day longer because you're going to have to clean off those oils, which are some of the worst oils to go ahead and affect fiber. I know guys that purposely would go ahead and use the oils on the tip of their finger to show back reflection just because the fiber was testing so well. They were doing new runs and putting new runs in. So the oil from the finger would actually go ahead and pit the end face or cause these little holes in the end of the fiber. It would always boggle my mind, but I, I would see some of uh, people doing it in the, fi you know, in the field. So film residues condensed with vapors from the air, we'll get into that in a little more detail. Uh, powdery coatings left after water or solvents evaporate away. All right. Caution. With the high-powered lasers now to use for communication systems, any contaminant can be burned into the fiber end face if it blocks the core while the laser is turned on. So basically, it's possible if the laser's high enough, I've never run into this, I've never personally seen it. I've heard of it though. You have your LC connector and somehow some residue or 
dust had gotten onto the end of the uh, connector. Well, the laser shot. That dust has now become fused almost one with that glass. You can never get it off. You know, the burn may damage the optical surface, um, but you'll never get it cleaned off. So what that means is you'll have to cut it off again and re-splice it, which is going to take time. And, you know, it's just one thing that, and, and more importantly, it's also it's going to take time, but it's also going to cost money, which, uh, you know, your project manager, your boss, your foreman, nobody's going to like that. So the goal is to truly eliminate any dust or contamination and provide a clean environment for the fiber optic uh, connection. So remember that inspection, cleaning, and re-inspection, like I said, I'm going to repeat myself. I am going to repeat myself. It's going to happen. Are critical steps which must be done before you make any fiber optic connection. So once again, clean, scope, and then you can take a picture. So here we're actually looking at an illustration of a particle migration. So on the left hand side here we're looking at an actual photograph. This is an actual fiber end face with these particles here. See how they're kind of like cookie crumbs? They're rather large. The white here, the dark is the cladding. So you can see how thick and fat the cladding really is around this very small fiber. And you can even say on the white here that there is little cookie crumbs or dust particles or contaminant. So each time that the connector, connectors are mated, particles around the core are displaced or smashed, causing them to migrate and spread across the fiber surface. Bam! Right there. Actual first mate right here. See how everything's smashed, worse off? Guess what? We, if we went and cleaned this the first time, if we did our job, cleaned first, nothing's here. So not only are we going to have bad tests because we did not do our job or someone before us didn't do our job, but here's where I, I have to be a little tough on, on the class or the crowd. E, it's your fault because even if somebody was lazy or didn't do their job or something happened that the front of this end phase became dirty, it's your job to clean it first, scope it, and then take a picture each single time. And the reason is because you, if you run into something like this. So particles larger than a 5U usually explode and multiply upon the mating. So those three to four little cookie crumbs we originally had, we're now looking at 45 spread across the board. Large particles can create barriers or air gaps. We want an actual physical contact when these two actually touch. So now if we have air gaps because of this dirt, dust, or contaminant, that's going to actually prevent our physical contact, which will allow less light to go ahead and pass through. Particles less than 5U tend to embed into the fiber surface, creating pits and or chips. Once again, that's not going to allow our fiber to pass light the way we need and to get the tests that we need. So here we go. We're going to go Team Ramrod again. Smashing. There we go. That's only the second mate right there. So now actually we have cookie crumbs, actually more cookie crumbs and some that have gotten larger. So now you can see the core, how it's affected. That's the third mate. Now look at this guy right here. This is the same fiber. We've just got random things just being thrown into the mix now. So you can see how easily something can get dirty. And if you had just one little speck here, I mean this is, excuse me to say, but this is a hot mess. But if you had one little speck, that would affect the actual testing and, and could perform to the point where you know you're not getting the the information coming across that you need. That's the fourth mate. If you look, you almost can't see any more white. The actual fiber itself is almost completely blocked out. 
So this is how you a clean end face should look. You've got your core, you've got your cladding, a clean single mode ceramic end face at 200 times magnification. No, sometimes the core is not illuminated. This is done just for ease so the class can see. Uh, and it's it's for but yeah it not always is the uh, actual core itself uh, illuminated contamination factors a clean connector should exhibit no signs of dirt scratching oil or other residue minor detects defects are allowed only on the outer cladding and if you can see this is a pretty good example here Core is illuminated, that's your actual fiber. Black is the uh, cladding. You can see some pieces of dust here, which since it's not blocking the core, it would have no effect. Com contamination factors. Now this is nice because it actually gives you a breakdown of, uh, of what it looks like. Dirt, boom. This is what dirt looks like. Let's throw some alcohol in the mix. It's like a bad trip almost. Some scratches. Uh, this, I couldn't even imagine that you would be able to see any light coming through with something of this nature. And then there's skin oil. So dust particles. Dust particles are really, they're rough, and they're, uh, they are troublesome. This image shows a connector with dust particles spread across the surface of the end face, and it needs to be clean. I mean, it's pretty simple and straightforward. If you see anything like this, it just needs to be cleaned. Obviously, it wasn't cleaned prior to scoping to get to this point, so... Right here, this is liquid contamination. Anything we're going to see swirls or almost something that, that is uh, a, like an oil. You know, it shows a connector with contamination of liquid that needs to be uh, cleaned. That could be alcohol. It could be water. You know, it could be some type of icky pick. You know, something that just got on the front there that shouldn't be there. And... Uh, you know, here is another type of liquid contamination. This is possible. This could be uh, some skin oil. Now, this connector actually has small droplets of uh, liquid that also needs to be cleaned. So these are just some nice examples to give you an idea of what you're up against. And when you go in scope and microscope your connectors, what you're going to be seeing. This is a connector with alcohol residue that needs to be cleaned. So somebody went and cleaned their connector, which is they're doing the right job, doing exactly what they need to do, but they didn't do it properly. So when they put the alcohol on, for whatever reason, they maybe got pulled away from the connector, had to talk to the boss, the wife was calling, whatever, what have you. That alcohol dried on the connector, and now you have this residue that you see right here. So now there's a dry residue. So this image shows a connector with dry residue that needs to be cleaning. So there was some type of alcohol-based cleaning product, whatever, what have you. When it dried and it was not wiped off completely. So when this dried, it, it gave a dry residue that is now still staying next to that connector. Here we see a connector with oil residue that needs to be cleaned. Now these kind of go in lines here. This almost looks similar to like some scratches here, but it's actually an oil residue. One key is when you do use wipes to go ahead and clean a connector, um, don't be cheap and try to use the, the wipe more than once. If you use the wipe, use it and then throw it away. 
because if you use it again, you may get your oils from your hand on it, and then when you go to pick that wipe up again and go to clean, it may get on that connector, it may embed itself on there on, on, your, on your actual wipe. So use that wipe, use it once, and then get rid of it. Dust could land on the wipe as you're going to the next connector. So, you know, you don't want to go and recontaminate other things from, from a cleaning that you did prior. As you can see, this actually illustrates the image shows a connector with scratches. These scratches are not detrimental to the end face, which does kind of blow my mind, but does not clean off. So deep scratches that appear on a cross of the fiber optic core, that can cause signal loss. So as you can see, the arrows here are showing the actual scratches. And what it's basically saying is there's scratches straight across the cladding, but none have gone across the core that are detrimental enough that actually causes signal loss. Here we see a connector with scratches that were caused, actually the scratches were a chipping. So it might have hit that at an angle and that scratch turned into a chip. So it's not just an actual line across, it's actually a piece of the glass or the cladding that's outright missing or removed. Pitting can also do that. Pitting is, like I was saying before, the oil skin. Uh, sometimes it can be different types of uh, cleaning products that, that I recommend you stay away from. But those cleaning products actually say on the labels, may damage your fiber. But people use them simply because they work so well. Um, but you know, long term, they end up damaging the fiber. So you know, here we actually see that connector with damage to the cladding. Um, cleaning will never remove the damaging of the cladding. A small amount of epoxy amount uh, cladding is allowable. Um, you know, this connector must be replaced. Any type of chipping or pitting in a connector is almost an always uh, need to be replaced. People sometimes try to push the connectors. I feel that's a waste of time and you're just going to end up, you know, wasting time. Uh, trying to polish that connector when you could easily just replace it. So this is an LC connector. Um, this image shows a 1.25 millimeter ferrule that has been over chaffered. This connector must be replaced. Um, you can never clean this. When this is done, it, it's just it's, it's, it, it, it can never be replaced. It, it, it has to be taken out. So right here, are some of the great cleaning products uh, that you can use to go ahead and uh, clean your connectors. We have a clean top here. When you press down on the lever, it opens up this metal door. You put your connectors in here, and you go ahead and you run it past. Like I was saying before, this machine will not allow you to use clean cloth on that fiber more than once. So every time you press down on this lever, it forces the cartridge, which are these cartridges here, which are replaceable, to turn. It's a wheel, and you will always get clean fiber going forward. So what this machine does, this little machine, which is very useful, which is called the Clee Top, it's used to go ahead and clean fiber, and you are forced to never, ever use the same piece of, uh, of wipe um, on this roll on the fiber. So it, it avoids uh, contamination. Here, telling you, well, this is probably a stack of a hundred. One use it once. You know, there's plenty of room to go on that fiber more than once. Use it, then lose one because you don't want to re you know cross contaminate. Um, these are all various packages here of different types of wipes. These are dry wipes. These are wipes with alcohol. I personally like the dry. You have bottles of alcohol right here that you can go and spray a connector down with or wipe and wipe it. These are already in packets that have it. This, I believe, in the front here is for icky pick to get that off the fiber. These are to clean your bulkheads here to get in those nice and tight spots. And then you have a handy-dandy little carrying bag to keep it all 
uh, together and uh, working and running for you. So this is going to break down your cleaning process and you need to follow it exactly uh, to make sure it is clean. So you always, always, always want to inspect, clean, inspect, connect. So you want to make sure you clean it, you want to make sure you inspect it, and you want to make sure you connect it. So it's the end face. You know, you, you start with a microscope. Is it clean? Yes, it's clean. You plug it into the mating connector. It's not clean? Well, let's dry clean it. Inspect the end face with a fiber scope. Is the end cl face clean? You're going to do this process over. If you do not like doing the same process, tedious process, over and over again, then I would consider not working in fiber because this is you have to be meticulous. You have to do the same thing over and over and over again. Sometimes you have to clean the same connector 10 times. I wish I was embellishing or making this up, but I'm not. Just because the dust on it has either been smashed in there from somebody, from yourself, you know, it just is difficult to go ahead and, and get it clean. So you want to go to a dry clean, inspect with an in-face fiber scope again, plug into a clean. If you do two dry cleans and it doesn't clean up for you, well, now we got to get wet. Got to get that alcohol out and immediately follow with a dry clean again. Then you go and inspect the end face again, plug into a mating connector. If you do this process, which you can see right here, is three times through, actually four if you take the original, four, start, dry clean, dry clean, wet clean. That's three times right there. If you go through three times and you're still showing having issues, your tests are not working as well as you'd like them to, uh, it's possible the connector's damaged. But you would be able to see that with your fiber scope. So you always inspect, always clean, always inspect, and connect. And don't forget, if you have, have the capabilities and you can do, do so, don't be shy. Take pictures. All you're doing is protecting yourself and proof in the pudding. You're showing how good of work that you're doing. Cleaning methods, there's various methods that can be used. 99% alcohol, that's, that's what you want. If you're actually going to a store, you want to get surgical alcohol. Wipes, chemicals, good kits include alcohol, wipes, your scope, your fiber scope, cleaning tools, got to have all of those. It's very, very important. And sorry if I rushed through that. Alcohol, wipes, scope, cleaning tools. Necessity. Got to have them. Cleaning procedures. The dry technique. Clean the eggs immediately with a free dry wipe. Do not blow dry canned air on. Never use it. Never use. It's the lazy way to try and make your job go a little faster. Don't use dry canned air, and I'll tell you why. Because there is some type of propellant in it that goes ahead and puts or leaves a residue on your connectors. You're just, it's going to take that much longer. You're going to have to re-clean it. So never, ever, 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 ever use blow dry canned air. It's just going to it's, add time, and that's going to cost money. Cleaning and a wet dry. All connectors must be, be cleaned before testing. Wet Kim wipes, which is a wipe that's actually wet, is 99% alcohol. Alka wipes, that's 90%. Noise collect connector cleaner, that's all for wet. Dry, this is a nice little unit here. It's I call it the cube. You know, it allows you to kind of work that connector with being gentle because there's a rubber mat underneath the, uh, the wipe there. When you're done using this, you don't just throw the whole cube away. You take this wipe off, and then you put a new wipe on. Clean top we went over a little bit in the beginning. Very, very useful. Cleaning and troubleshooting right here. 
Just a heads up, we're getting closer to the tail end of our webinar here. Thank you for being patient, sticking through, being attentive. We, uh, we're coming up on a couple more slides here. And remember, like I said, save those questions for the end. Hopefully, we have time to go ahead and go over them. If we don't, feel free to email me or call me. A uh, number you can reach me at directly is 877-529-5500. And my direct extension is 6011. So with the picture on the left here, and my email address is adam.goth, that's G-O-T-H, at fiberoptic.com. So if you prefer just emailing, you can get a hold of me that way also. As you can see these cleaning sticks right here, sometimes if there's already dust, dirt, or whatever what have you in here and you don't scope to inspect it when you go and jam these in to clean it out you're actually turning into clean team ramrod and you're just jamming dust in there and making things worse actually instead of uh, making things better so if you use a fiber alcohol uh, fiber preparation cleaning fluid if you leave any wet wetness anything wet in that bulkhead there's the possibility that dust is going to be attracted there, get sucked in, and then, you know, be stuck there with that residue. So that's what these cleaning sticks are for. Um, they're great to get in there, but you have to use them properly not to cause damage to the bulkhead or, or the connectors. Um, this fiber preparation fluid is amazing. A lot of people love this, stick by it, swear by it. But if you do any type of traveling, and here's another quick tip, you will not be able to get this on the plane. Planes do not like this. Anything where it has this caution right here, they will confiscate it immediately, and there you're left without having your cleaning fluid or, or your alcohol, which is absolutely a necessity to have. So cleaning with alcohol. Never allow cleaning alcohol to evaporate slowly off the ferrule. It can leave residue material on the cladding and the fiber core. And it will be a pain in the tuchus to get that off. I am not kidding you. So allowing that to dry, it's your worst case scenario. So it's extremely difficult to clean that off without another wet cleaning. So that means you would have to repeat the process, use alcohol again or cleaning solution to get what you already tried cleaning off the first time. So, um, that can actually be more difficult than the actual contaminant you were trying to remove originally. So liquid cleaners, they can get in those small crevices or cavities, and you know it, it can be a pain in the neck to go ahead and, and get removed. Cleaning methods. No known cleaning methods are 100% effective. That's why we have the pattern set in place, the process. So you clean, scope, take a picture. You, you do it over and over again. Cleanliness is the best thing. It's, it's what's needed for fiber. It's the only way you can get the test to go through. Because 90% of the time, that's what the problem is. Your connectors or your bulkheads are just not clean. So it really is imperative that the inspection is included as part of the cleaning process. Improper cleaning can cause damage to the equipment, can add time to your job process, and it may even increase cost because you have to fix connectors. Do not scrub the fiber against fabric or clean over the same surface more than once. I can't tell you how many times in the field I would see guys just wipe a connector on their shirt, on their pants, their dirty pants that already have oils and different things on them, even if they were just out to lunch and it's a little bit of ketchup, and they go and rub the connector on their shirt, guess what? That's contaminant. I mean, it sounds like it's funny, but I've seen this in the field. And in my head, I just think to myself, yeah, that's another half an hour we're going to have to sit here scrubbing that connector, and we can't go home until that's clean and we get a good test out of it. So because somebody's you know not doing the proper cleaning job it's just going to add time and money to our uh, our job project 
So you do not want to be rough with the fiber. You know, you want to make sure it's clean, but you don't want to affect it to the point you're personally scratching it or affecting the end face. Um, a nice little uh, fail safe is with all of those dust caps you have lying around from taking off the end faces, dust caps, you know, cleaning caps, whatever it is, bring a Ziploc bag with you or like a little chiclets container, something plastic where you can put those all in to keep them from the contaminants of the environment and the outside. Um, so that's something that's, that's nice uh, and a quick fix there. Plus you don't lose them. They're all in one place. So you know where they're at. I know a lot of guys like to just go ahead and throw them in their launch box that they're used for, for testing there, but sometimes they fall out. You know, so that's why I like to use something that you can actually close a container. It's no different than when you're doing fiber splicing and you're doing the cleave on the fiber and you have all of those small shards of fiber. You wouldn't want to be getting that in your finger, in your hair, and in anybody else because that's borderline impossible to get out. So you want to have the proper management for those fiber shards. You put them in the fiber container, you know, to protect yourself. No different than with your dust caps. You know, you want to do the same thing. So storing cleaning products, resealable containers should be used to store all cleaning products and store end caps in separate containers. The inside of these con containers must be very clean and the lid should be kept tightly closed to avoid contamination on the contents during the fiber connection. So very, very important. Like I said, you don't even need a special uh, holder, just a pl plastic bag's fine. Just make sure that plastic bag, you didn't have a sandwich in it or something beforehand. You know, make sure it's clean. All right, now we're coming up on the never, ever, ever page. And then we're going to have the always, always, always page. And we are going to start wrapping this bad boy up. Once again, really want to thank everybody for attending this webinar Wednesday. I really enjoy doing it. I've been doing these for about two years now, and uh, I really enjoy some of the uh, people that reach out to me after the class then. Feel free to email me, to call me. That's what we're here for. We're here as an asset, and if you need help with a sale or a project or just a simple question you think might be silly, there's no such thing as a silly question. There are, but... I won't laugh at you, and uh, even if it is a little funny, we'll laugh about it. We'll get you through it, and we'll get you where you need to be. So never, ever, ever use alcohol or wet cleaning without a way to ensure that it does not leave a residue on the end face. Don't be lazy. You put something on there, clean it off as quick as you can. It can cause damage to your connectors and equipment. Never look into a fiber while the system lasers are on. Some of my predecessors and, and other associates that teach some of the classes here are very adamant about this. If you have a live fiber, don't look at it. Do you want to be blind? Do you want to honestly see black spots in your vision for the remainder of your life? I don't think so. So do not look at a live fiber because what's going to happen is you're going to end up burning out your regina. Would you stare at the sun for a half an hour straight and not blink? Okay, just imagine that in a split second. Enough said on that. Never clean your bulkheads or receptacle devices without a way to inspect them first. That's Team Ramrod. That's you just sticking that cleaning stick in there thinking you're doing a good job and all you're doing is smashing more dirt and dust in there. You stick that connector in, you'll be lucky if any light transmits through at all. Never touch products without being properly grounded. This I throw in here just as a safety precaution. You want to know what I'm talking about here? This is your electricity. So if you're in the head end, make sure that you're properly grounded. You know, this isn't really getting into the fiber side where you want to make sure that you always are being safe. I'll never forget one of my first day days on the job. We go into uh, a head end unit and there's sparks flying out. And we are told from the head office, it's out, there's no electricity, there's no power going to it. Well, that's what they told us, and they swore we called. Believe your own eyes. Believe your ears. If you see electricity sparking, don't go in there. You know, so we were right. It was still on, even though it was stating that it was off. So make sure you're properly grounded. 
Never use unfiltered handheld magnifiers or focusing optics to inspect your connectors. Big surprise, it'll end up damaging them. Unfiltered is the key word there. Never connect a fiber to a fiber scope while the system laser's on. Once again, you're going to damage your equipment. Never touch the end face of the fiber connectors. I, I can't tell you how many times I still see this today. And it's done on purpose. And they know better. But people still go and touch the end face of a fiber connector. You should. There is no reason, unless you want that fiber to test badly, to touch an end face of a fiber connector. There's no reason. Never twist or forcefully pull on fiber cable. Fiber is tough. It is tenacious. It is difficult to break, but you can do it. So don't twist it. Don't pull it. Don't be forceful. Treat it nice like your boyfriend or girlfriend or your mom or dad or your grandmother or grandfather. Never reuse any tissue, swab, or cleaning cassette. Does it sound like I'm repeating myself a couple times here? It's done on for a reason. It's done on purpose. Never touch the clean area of a tissue, swab, or cleaning fabric. Use it, then lose it. Once and done. You know, in and out. Kids in the uh, NCAA basketball now play for one year, then go to the NBA. Once and done. Never touch any portion of a tissue or swab where alcohol was applied. That alcohol will immediately take any of the oils and, and apply it to that wipe. And then it will apply it to that connector or that bulkhead adapter. Never touch the dispensing tip of an alcohol bottle. I like to put a little note in here. It's similar to eye drops. Eye drops that you put in your eyes, are you going to touch the end and finger up the end? No, you want to know why? Because you're probably going to get an eye infection. You're going to get pink eye. People are going to make fun of you. Oh, don't sit next to Adam at the office. He goes and gets pink eye. It's the same thing with your adapter, your connector, your mating sleeve. Don't touch it. Don't touch the alcohol bottle. You're just going to go ahead and contaminate it. Never use alcohol around an open flame or a spark. Alcohol is very flammable. I love America. I'm proud to be in the United States of America. But the fact that this has to be placed in here, do not use alcohol around an open flame or a spark, well, for shame on us, but you see it right here. So it's flammable. Don't do it. I enjoy my fan base or people that occasionally listen to my webinars. So keep coming back. This is the always, always, always. We want to make sure that we always, always, always do these things. Always turn off a laser source before you inspect fiber connectors, optical components, or bulkheads. You'll save your eyeballs, and you won't affect any of your equipment negatively. Always make sure that the cable is disconnected on both ends, or that the card or pluggable receiver is removed from the chassis. Always wear the appropriate safety glasses when required in your area. Be sure that any laser safety glasses meet federal and state regulations and are matched to the lasers used within your environment. If you're shooting a wavelength of 1310 and you got 1550 wavelength glasses on, guess what? You're wearing protective glasses, but because it's a 1310 wavelength, that's not going to do anything with 1550 glasses on, so you could go out and affect your vision that way also. So you want to make sure that the appropriate safety glasses, you have them and they're required, that they match. Always inspect the connectors or adapters before you clean. Always inspect and clean the connectors before you make a connection. Always, always, always use the connector's housing to plug or unplug a fiber. Always keep a protective cap or unplugged fibers 
So when you're not using the fiber, make sure you put a dust cap on it. Always store unused protective caps in a resealable container or plastic Zippo bag in order to prevent possibility of the transfer of dust to the fiber located on the containers near the connectors for easy access. Always discard used tissues and swabs properly, just like you would do with the shards of uh, freshly cleaved fiber. Worst feeling in the world, and I'm not going to lie to you, is getting that fiber in your finger, and unfortunately it's happened to me a time or two. And we have finally got to the Q&A uh, for the questions here. I do apologize. I promised I'd keep us to 45 minutes for everybody, all the attendees that have stayed with me and made it on through. I appreciate that. If you could go ahead, because we are now 10 minutes over the 45 that I promised, um, if you could please email me or call me directly. As you can tell, I don't have a problem yapping the old flapper here. So I'm happy to talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. My number is 877-529-9114, and my direct extension, once again, is 6011. So happy to go over anything uh, personally. If you don't want to talk to me, because my voice kind of is like fingers on a chalkboard or you know, a knife in the old ear socket, I understand. I hear myself sometimes. So you can email me at adam.goth at fiberoptic.com. That's adam.goth at fiberoptic.com. I really do appreciate everybody uh, being patient and sticking with me for the extra 10 minutes I went over here. Um, I thank everybody that follows us uh, each, each month and enjoys and makes it to our webinar Wednesday. Uh, this is the end of the presentation. I really do appreciate your time. Um, reach out, you know, if you have any questions, um, even if it's just give me two cents on how you think maybe the webinar could be improved or if there's something that you just, you know, really wanted to talk about. But thanks, everybody, for coming on out. And uh, we, Adam Goth and the Fiber School, really appreciate your time and look forward to talking with you guys in the not-too-distant future and look forward to having everybody for our upcoming webinar Wednesday. So make it a great day, and we will talk with you in the future.